in the days after Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was killed in an Arctic prison in Russia, a Russian website that was made to look like a news outlet posted what it claimed was a leaked audio recording of two high-level U.S. State Department officials discussing who should replace Navalny as leader of the Russian opposition. The implication, of course, was that there's no real Russian opposition to Vladimir Putin, that anybody in Russia who's opposed to Putin must be part of an American front, must be part of what is, in effect, a U.S. government creation. Like, Navalny wasn't a real resistance leader. He wasn't a real opposition figure. He was just a tool of the American government, and they'd pick a new one to replace him now. This supposedly leaked audio was so obviously fake, it would fool exactly no one. A State Department official told the Daily Beast, which broke the story, quote, in, the ca in case the thick Russian accents pretending to be U.S. officials were not clear, yes, we can confirm this audio is fake. But still, it doesn't have to appear to be all that real. You launder it, Right. You, you say it's been cited here. You describe it here. You move it into another fake news site here. I mean, the, the Russians successfully got this idea into circulation. For a time, if you searched the names of the people in this story, the U.S. government officials who were named as the supposed you know, source of this leaked audio in the story, the, the hoax audio came up as results number two and number three on Google. And if you clicked through to the quote-unquote news story, you would be taken to this site, the Miami Chronicle, which at first glance might appear to be an actual Florida news site. At one point, it featured the tagline, Florida News since 1937. But this chronicle has existed for less than a month, and it's created by Russians. So is this very similar looking one, not the famous New York Daily News, but instead the New York News Daily also, here's another one, the Chicago Chronicle. That sounds like it could be a real paper. It's not. Or this one, the DC Weekly. All of these different sites have the same mix of AI-generated stories on right-wing hot-button issues like crime and immigration, plus a whole slew of stories advancing the Kremlin line on the war in Ukraine. Not long ago, the DC Weekly site posted an entirely made up story about Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky spending tens of millions of dollars on a pair of yachts. Yachts for himself. The story was total bullpucky, but it's perfectly designed to spread on social media as if it were from some real news site, which it is not. At least one Republican member of Congress and one Republican senator then cited the fake yachts as a reason to oppose uh, approving any more funding for Ukraine. It's Republican Senator J.D. Vance, Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. And while that's hilarious about them, in all seriousness, Ukraine funding is still being blocked by Republicans in Congress. These very obvious Russian fake news sites are proliferating right now. And again, they are not sophisticated. You spend just a few seconds on one of these sites and you quickly realize this is not, say, a newspaper that has been bringing you Florida news since 1937. But these efforts do not have to be sophisticated to spread disinformation effectively. You just launder it. You just spread it around. You say you've seen it somewhere else. You get, you get the government to comment on it. If you can just get it into the bloodstream, if you can just lend a sort of aura of credibility to posts flying by in any social media feed, mission accomplished.